Welcome back to Sports by GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Jeremy Lapidus. Today is Friday, October 4th. If you are just tuning in, we just went over the wild game that Kirk Cousins and the Falcons had, a comeback victory to win in overtime 36-30 to on one of the greatest Thursday night footballs of recent memory. In this segment, we're going to turn our attention to baseball. The MLB divisional round is set after a near walk-off, as close as you can to a walk-off win by the New York Mets on the road, eliminating the division champions, Milwaukee Brewers. Crazy moment. We're going to talk about that and more in just a second. But before we do that, remember, if you would like to be an even bigger part of the show than you already are, all you need to do is go to gsmcpodcast.net. Or if you are on YouTube, you can use the Super Chat feature. If you do either one of those things, a message should pop up on the bottom of the screen for you, me, and everybody else around the world to see. If you do have a burning question about sports, anything at all that you would like to ask, go and throw that in the comments. Throw it in the chat. For instance, Anthony asks if we have any information on who the favorites are for the new Marlins manager after they part ways with Skip Schumacher. There's a couple of different options. I haven't heard anything specifically for you, Anthony, but a group that I would target, uh, there's a bunch of, you could go get former managers. I think they. I think the Marlins, for what they need, they need a, a manager that it's going to be a little bit younger. We're not looking at a guy like, you know, the Reds hired. I don't think Terry a Terry Francona type is going to be the kind of guy that they want. Maybe they want one of these up-and-coming names. Fangraphs gives out a bunch of options. Will Venable assistant manager for the Rangers, Johnny Washington, the Angels hitting hitting coach, guys like that. I haven't seen anything officially yet, but those are the kind of guys that if I were the Marlins, I would focus on. Not one of those former managers. I want someone younger that can vibe with a new clubhouse. Get them together, grow uh, grow strong with a with a pseudo rebuild. Someone young that can you that can grow with the rebuild as well. I think that's what they need more than anything. But there's a lot of different options. You could go get one of those former managers out there. Not something I would say, but just my opinion. Uh, but like I was saying, we're going to get into the MLB playoffs. Marlins, obviously not in the playoffs. Uh, like uh, 7077 memorabilia said, <laughs> they, uh, they should... Uh, Maybe relegation there, uh, but the playoffs are here. Uh, one more, one more uh, comment on this. Anthony says, "How about the top two managers in college baseball? Guy from Man- guy from Vanderbilt and Kevin O'Sullivan from Florida. If you can lure one of those guys out, I like it. Um, it's just tough because they don't have that MLB experience. It kind of fits the mold of what I was saying. But a lot of times when you're hiring a manager, it comes either from a former MLB manager or someone that's be- is currently in uh, MLB clubhouse, either as an assistant manager or as a base coach. From what I've seen, I like the idea of going and getting a guy from college, but. I don't expect them to do that. I think that would would, would would be a good idea, though. But getting to the playoffs here. Obviously, a wild, wild card round. One of the craziest ones that we have seen thus far. For the, for, for the first four wild card rounds, three of them ended in upsets with the Royals, the Tigers, and the Mets all taking down their division-winning opponents. Or uh, all taking down their home bound opponents the Tigers taking down the Astros Mets obviously in a very very memorable sports moment a legendary moment from from lifetime Met Pete Alonzo a dinger in the top of the ninth three run home run to take the lead in a night where they have been completely shut down the Mets had taking that momentum that is a huge win for these Mets as their magical season continues the Tigers don't let them get hot. They got hot at the right time. They've been the hottest team in baseball. And, of course, the Royals upsetting the Orioles in a pitching duel series. I love me a good pitcher's duel. Some people don't. I respect it. I love what the how the Royals team is built here. But it sets up a lot of really interesting matchups in the divisional round. Starting off in the AL here, we have three of our four matchups being... Divisional matchup. So we're going to start off with the one that isn't a divisional matchup so we can break down some of these opponents that have played 13 times against each other this season already. The Royals take on the Yankees. 
the Royals, like I said, have that pitching staff. They have a great head. They have a great top three there. Maybe one of the best top three rival rivaled probably only by the Phillies right now, as far as starting pitching strength goes. I'm always going to be a little bit biased as uh with starting pitching. It's it's crazy uh, what starting pitching can do for you in the playoffs. Obviously, we saw that in full effect with Tariq Skubal, with uh, a lot of these starting pitchers in the Mets series, with, with a lot of the starting pitchers in the Royals series as well, With on both sides there. They keep their teams in the game even when the offense isn't working, and that's going to be the key for the Royals. Obviously, the Yankees are, an, are a weirdly built team. They're a team that, Basically has two hitters, but those two hitters, arguably the two best hitters on the planet. You got to throw Shohei in there. But they're two of the three best hitters on the planet right now, and they're on the same team, back-to-back. They don't have much outside of that, but if the pitching can survive against a Royals offense that has been really, really rough in this last month of baseball, they have a shot to beat them pretty easily. Now, again, that Royals pitching staff, incredible. I really do love the way that this Royals pitching staff is built. I think they're a team that can put the Yankees on the ropes. But those two guys in the lat lineup, it it combines for about five people all in all with how good they are back to back. And I think the Royals offense is going to be their downfall here. As good as Bobby Witt is, as fun as this series is going to be, I just don't think the Royals have the offensive juice to compete with the Yankees, especially when the Yankees have that home field advantage. I know Kansas City can get wild in the playoffs, and they haven't been here since they won the World Series almost 10 years ago. Lost 100 games last year. But still, I think the Yankees are going to find a way to win this one. I think they take it in four games. I do think the Royals put up a fight in all of them because that pitching staff, again, is excellent. But I think the Yankees are just going to be a little too much for the Royals to handle. Yankees in four. Now to the Tigers. I see you guys talking about the Tigers here. The Tigers, you're right, are a problem. They have been the hottest team in baseball. In August, On August 11th, they had a 0.2% chance to make the playoffs. And now they've swept the dynasty Astros. Right? The Astros are a team that prior to this season had made it to seven straight ALCSs. If that if experience is a thing, which, as uh, 1777 memorabilia points out, the Royals don't have that, it does make a difference sometimes. The Tigers have just taken out the team with the most experience. Now they get a division opponent, a division opponent they split the season series with, went six out of thir- six out of thirteen against six and seven against this team. They haven't played since they got hot though. They haven't played since they got hot. The Guardians are a team that really are. I can't I can't figure out how this team works, right? They have a great bullpen. Emmanuel Classe, if the game gets to him in the ninth, it's over. You're not going to be able to come back, even with this, even with this hot of a Tigers team. I don't think the Astros were the best team in the AL. You can make that argument. I don't think they were. Uh Andre says this feels like the perfect window for the Yanks to do it with their kryptonite Houston Astros out. You're right. I think they make it out of this series. With the Astros out, I think the AL is wide open now. I think any of these four teams could make a run, quite honestly. I think the Tigers, like you say, I don't think they're the best team, but they are for sure the hottest team, and that makes for a dangerous combination. Outside of Tariq Skubal, they don't have a starting pitcher that I think they they can rely on. But I think the issue is both this Cleveland team and this Tiger and this Detroit team, they're kind of both built on this power of friendship, right? They don't have anything elite that sticks out to you outside of Emmanuel Class A for the Cleveland Guardians there. So there's nothing that I'm looking at and I'm saying this is going to be a blowout either side. I think regardless of who wins this, it goes five. And I think in this situation where it is that close, I think being the hotter team is what matters. So I think the Tigers win this, set up a set up a ALCS matchup between the Yankees and the Tigers, Tigers in five. And that one, it might sound lopsided. Really anything with the Tigers in my brain kind of sounds lopsided, but that one could be interesting. Right, Like I said, I think the AL is as wide open as it gets right now, especially with the Astros out. 
I think you could make the argument like uh like 1777 memorabilia said in the YouTube chat that the Astros were the best team. I think it was a wide open playoff to begin. I don't think there was a clear best team any anyway, but it really does make it more wide open now that the team with the most experience, the one that you felt like, oh, they're just they just find a way to get there every single time is out. It's anybody's guess. My AL, my team that I had coming out of the AL was the Astros. So at this point, it's going to be a tight one, and I kind of want to rock with the Tigers. As much as I think the Yankees are the best team left, uh, we've seen upset after upset after upset in these playoffs. We have not seen a divisional opponent make it out of the first round yet, or a division winner make it out of the first round yet, and that is just ridiculous. That's not a normal thing. I cannot wait to see what happens for the rest of these playoffs. But in the AL, I do have the Yankees and the Tigers coming out. And we'll break down the ALCS when we actually have it set. On the NL side of things, two more divisional matchups, two huge rivalries, starting off with the Mets and the Phillies. The Mets are finding a way to reverse the Met curse. They have found so many opportunities to pull a Mets, whether it be in that double header to make the playoffs against the Braves coming back in the, in the ninth inning after giving up that lead when you had already come back from three down in the eighth beforehand with a huge bomb from Francisco Lindor, whether that be Pete Alonzo with his huge career defining home run moment in this series against Milwaukee and what could have been his final game as a Met. The Mets have had so many opportunities to just be the Mets of old, the Mets we expect, and they have not done that. They have been the opposite of what we expect. The Mets play the Phillies in their 13-game season series. It was, again, pretty split. The Mets took 6 out of 13, so 6-7 and seven against the Phillies overall. When I talk about pitching, and maybe, and maybe that's not fair of me to take a look at, the Mets pitching has been awesome. Luis Severino has been awesome. Awesome. You take a look at, at all of the pitchers that threw for the Mets, all of their starters, they have been awesome against that Brewers team. But that three-headed monster in Philly right now with their pitchers, that's no joke. Like I said, I think only the Royals are a team that can compare with them when it comes to starting pitching prowess. And when it comes to the playoffs, my MO is when it's close, defer to starting pitching. And deferring to starting pitching makes it the Phillies this year. The Phillies against the Mets is going to be a fun series. I have this one going five as well. I think all I think all of these are going to be tight regardless. But the Phillies, if they can find a way to get their bats back after a little bit of a break, I don't see why they can't take this one in five. I do hear all the arguments for the Mets. I know I just spouted it about the Tigers, about being hot at the right time, being incredibly important. But with the Phillies, this just feels like this just feels like their time. They don't have that boogeyman in Atlanta left. And you could say the same thing about the Yankees in the AL. They don't have the they don't have they don't have the boogeyman anymore. Uh, but I do think the Phillies are a team that are real world series contenders, and I think they win. Uh, I think they win this series in five. And now getting to the main show. There's a reason I saved this one for last. Like uh, 1777 memorabilia said, everyone is distracted with the Padres and Dodgers. There's a reason I saved this one for last because I do think there's a reason everyone's distracted for this. This is. A huge matchup, another division matchup, one where the Padres took eight out of 13 in the regular season, eight and five overall against this team. The last time they matched up in the playoffs, San Diego beat LA. Obviously, it's kind of a younger brother, older brother kind of complex there. They're trying to prove that it wasn't just a one year thing. The Dodgers' weakness in the playoffs, as always, is starting pitching depth. And you've just heard me spout on and on and on about how important I think starting pitching is in the playoffs. It's the reason why the Dodgers haven't won more than one World Series in this stretch of utter domination that they have been through because they don't have that starting pitching depth. Their lineups consistently, year and year in, year out, have been some of the best in baseball. 
Their pitching on paper has been some of the best, but it has not been able to get the job done. I am rocking with the Padres in this one. The Padres, when we talk about starting pitching, they've got a 1-2-3 punch. They've got the lineup to go through on paper. While it's not the L.A. Dodgers, if you if you take a look at it, you could kind of go bar for bar with them. You know, you don't have those MVP stacked on MVP stacked on MVP, but you do have MVP candidates stacked on MVP candidates stacked on MVP candidates. So it's it it's very close, and I think the momentum that the Padres have especially with, again, that advantage in the pitching, with their bullpen, being able to go out and make those trades at the deadline, getting now three closers or three former closers in their pen, they have been awesome for them. That bullpen has been elite since since the trade deadline, and it has helped them to be one of the hotter teams in baseball. Again, getting hot at the right time matters. It matters in in every sport, but in no sport do I think it matters like it does in baseball. We've seen... Lynn Sandy runs happen in baseball, even in recent times. Obviously, last year, two teams came out of nowhere to make the World Series. The Nationals, back in 2019, they went on their Lynn Sandy run. You know, the ba- baseball is a very fickle sport. You have to be on it in the moment, and I think the Padres have it right now. I think they take down the Dodgers in five. I know... Uh, I- I know you you can throw out your conspiracy theories, uh, Larry Sports Talk, about uh, the umpires fixing the game, but I'm going to pretend this is on an even playing field. And honestly, I don't think it's going to be fixed. I think this is going to be a great series either way. And it, it I'm not going to lie to you, it sounds like you're making excuses. <laughs> but still, I think this is going to be a great series. I cannot wait for the NLCS. I cannot wait for the ALCS. And I cannot wait for these for the baseball playoffs this is going to be one of the best baseball playoffs i think or it's shaping up to be in a very very long time obviously it has to compete with football in full swing but still it has my attention and i'm going to keep you guys up to date on everything as we keep it rolling throughout the postseason let me know who you have i'd love to hear your thoughts on this uh i i don't think the dodgers win until next year I don't think they win until Otani gets to pitch, and that's that's why I don't think they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna fix it, uh, Larry Sports Talk here. But I'd love to hear your thoughts. We're gonna take a quick break here. When we come back, we are transitioning to football. It's Friday. We're doing game picks for both college football and the NFL. We're starting off in the NFL, so stick around for that. We'll be right back here on Sports by GSMC Podcast Network. 